you. Thank you very much. Sounds like you're having a great party. <laughs> well, well, we haven't counted all the votes yet. About half of the votes have been counted. We're in a good second place. But the good news is we're doing very, very well in getting delegates. couple of months, the enthusiasm for the cause of liberty continues to grow exponentially. And that's all good news, especially for you young people who need it and move it. There's a lot of reason for us to be very optimistic, even though, like I've said so many times, the country's waking up, but Washington is still sound asleep. <laughs> so our message has to be loud and clear. We have to wake them up, wake the rest of the country up, because we cannot continue to do what we're doing. That is what most people in this country know, that we cannot continue to spend money, borrow money, print money, and, and spread ourselves around the world like we are, that all has to change because we're flat out broke, we have to admit it, which means, you know, what we have to do is not all that complicated. What we need to do is just get people in Washington to follow the Constitution, which solve all our problems. <laughs> now, just, just think of how that would solve our foreign policy. You know, it says in the Constitution that we have a strong national defense. It's a responsibility of the federal government. The, res the president has a lot of responsibility. But right now, uh, I don't feel like we do spend a lot on defense. We spend too much money on militarism doing the wrong thing, getting ourselves into trouble. <laughs> and, and of course, one, one of the reasons is that since World War II, we haven't gone to war in the proper manner. Constitution is explicit. The people are supposed to vote through their congressmen, and the Congress is supposed to vote for the war. And then the president runs the war. The president is not allowed to go to war without proper permission. So one, one very good idea and a strong suggestion is since we're broke and we're $1.5 trillion in deficit every single year, why don't we stop spending the money overseas by bringing our troops home and stopping the wars? And, and then, of course, uh, the, the founders we know uh, had a difficult problem with the monetary issue before they wrote the Constitution. They had runaway inflation with the continental dollar. So they were explicit in the Constitution. They said only gold and silver can be legal tender and you can't print paper money, and there's no authority for a central bank, no authority for a Federal Reserve System. We are getting that message out, believe me. <laughs> But a, a lot of, the large majority still is not with us about ending the Fed, but 80% of the American people now say that it's up to Congress to start auditing the Fed and find out what they're doing and who they're bailing out. But once they come around to understanding the monetary issue, if they're concerned about big government and deficits, it's impossible with sound money because you can't print gold, you can't spend the money, and therefore God, Congress would have to quit spending the money. And there wouldn't be the deficits. And guess what that would prevent? The financial bubbles, what, the, what would that prevent? The inflation, it would prevent, of course, the recessions and depressions and the weak economy and a massive worldwide debt crisis that we're facing now that cannot be resolved by doing more of the same things that created the problems in the first place.
But we do have to ask the question then, what, what should the federal government be doing? I said we have to have, they should institute sound money, and they should give us a strong national defense, they should keep us out of these wars, but what, what else should they do? They should protect our liberty. They should guarantee our freedom. You know, we take, we take an oath of office to defend, uh, uh, defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Right now, we should worry a lot more about the domestic threat to our liberties than anybody invading this country. It's not going to happen. That is, that is one thing that we can say. Our, our military is strong and efficient. Nobody would dare actually attack us. So therefore, that is taken care of. So what we need to do is quit going looking for trouble, invading countries, occupying countries, and we have to reject this notion totally and completely of preemptive war. Preemptive war is starting the war. We, as Americans, don't start war. We'll fight them if we need to, and we'll win them if we have to. We'll declare them if necessary, but we should not start the war. <laughs> So many of us that what made our country great was the emphasis on personal liberty. If you have personal liberty, that means you have a right to your life, you have a right to your liberty, you should, of course, have the right to keep the fruits of your labor. Yeah. But that system doesn't work unless you understand property rights. Your property, you have a right to your own life, that means you own your own life. And property is very important, but property now today is regulated so much by government, you have to get permission from the government for every single thing you do with your land. And of course, if you don't pay the rent, your taxes, you, you lose your land. So the whole, the whole thing has de-emphasized the value of property. The uh, whole idea of the income tax emphasizes the fact that the government owns our income and then they allow us to keep a certain percentage under their, their rules. But we, we can restore prosperity by having sound money, limited government, a much less taxation, a lot less regulation, and a lot less uh, debt, which means that we quit spending overseas. That is not complicated, but politically it is complicated because there are still a powerful special interest in Washington and around the country who want power. Power is the seductive issue that tempts people in both parties and for all politics. So the, what we want, wanting our liberty, means we want to diminish the power of government and give the power and the control back to the people. <laughs> Which means, if we understand where our liberty comes from, it comes to us from our creator in a natural way. It means that people should come together on this issue. Diversity shouldn't exist. All diversity should come together because liberty permits people to be diverse, as long as they don't hurt people or hurt, you know, take people's property. This means it should appeal to people and that people can use that liberty in different ways. They can spend their money the way they want. If they want to waste it, they have a right to waste their money in a free society but they don't have a right to come to us or to the government and bail them out when they mess up. Yeah. And, this, and this say, the same thing about social or personal liberty. It is the same thing. For some reason, 100 years ago, uh, when we embarked on this big government, we, we took liberty and chopped it to pieces, thinking that your personal lifestyle and your, and your personal way you live is different from your economic life. And people half-heartedly uh, defended both. But you put it back together and say the right to your life means you defend your right to run your life as you so choose, and you also have your economic liberty to take care of your property and work and keep the fruits of your labor. It's all one issue. We, 
We have a long way to go to solve our problems in Washington, but let me tell you, from the travels I have made around, especially in this particular state of Washington, there's a lot of enthusiasm, believe me, for the cause of liberty. But there's, there's reason to expect that it will take a little while longer because we still have to deal with the politicians. You know, there are still a bunch of politicians over in Washington and a lot of special interests. There are so many people who benefit from this system, whether it's the monetary system, the military industrial complex, media. whatever. The media is correct. They all, there's a big, there's a big control. There's a big control and it's, a, and it's, and it's power. So the answer can be found in liberty we had this great experimentation, the best in the history of the world. We were the freest nation in the world, and we were the most prosperous nation in the world. And now, now we are less free. We've devalued our currencies. Devaluing our currencies always undermines the middle class, and it always uh, shrinks the middle class, and wealth is transferred from the poor and the middle class to the wealthy. We see it all around us, and we have nothing but debt. The debt that the wealthy ran up and Wall Street ran up, and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, we own all that debt, and the people have that burden. And it has to change, or we can't be, we cannot restore our freedoms. We cannot restore our prosperity until we understand the very nature of money, the very necessity of a different foreign policy, the very need to have an understanding of property rights, and of course the understanding about what liberty is all about. We've had this great experiment and had this great success, and now if we don't do our job, if this message isn't spread, and we're all obligated to spread it, if this is not spread, we will continue to lose. But let me tell you, the message I'm getting is the message is spreading, and we <laughs> we do not we do not know exactly exactly what will come out of the campaign. We do know that the strategy of building up delegates is pretty sound for a position to have. But there's. I want to finish on one, on one note. The Republican Party and all the other candidates, one thing they agree on, they say, we want to elect to pick the individual who can best beat Obama. That is a <laughs> Well, and you know, it just turns out that there was a recent poll. <laughs> recent poll to show that I, with your help, do the best against Obama right now. And it, it, should not, it should not be a surprise because when we go around and we get our rallies, people come out. Of course, we have a lot of young people, energetic. We have a lot of independents. We have a lot of independents come out. And we have a lot of Democrats coming around, too, saying they're frustrated. But that makes my point. Freedom brings people together. And that is the reason this message will bring conservative Republicans, undecided uh, you know, independents, as well as Democrats who are sick and tired of the promises of the promise to protect civil liberties and to end these wars. We can build this coalition and bring it together and restore the republic. Thank you very much.